It's a brand new college hockey season. For UMass Lowell, the expectations are high. A variety of preseason polls have ranked the club in the top ten in the country. The Riverhawks grabbed the number two spot in the Hockey East coaches poll. So now, a look at the season ahead. A conversation with Riverhawk head coach, Blaze McDonald. You like this hockey club that you've assembled as we get ready for the 2009-2010 campaign? Oh, no question about it. I mean, we, you know, we have all the components in place that make up a good team, a championship level team. We have ten talent, we have commitment, you know, we have great focus, uh, guys work hard and their preparation is is, uh, is very good. So you put all those things together, I mean, you give yourself a chance to compete every day. I also think there's really some internal components to our team that I like, where guys have a healthy respect for each other, but certainly want to compete and hold each other accountable and understand that if I give my very best against you every day, that's going to make both of us better. So that's really where you can make some pretty good games. In a, in a competitive cauldron and guys can rise their level of ability and confidence and, and, and that type of thing. So we're in a pretty good place. It's a long season. I think our depth looks pretty good right now. Two freshmen uh, look pretty good uh, in our first exhibition game and that would be Riley Wetmore and Joe Caveney. And our other guys, uh, you know, Colin Wrights look very good. Robert Visca, he's a he's a natural freshman, you know, so it's, it's, it's going to take him a little bit of time. He's the youngest guy on our team, but he's shown great ability as well. And I really like how our upperclassmen and leaders have kind of helped those guys uh, feel comfortable with the systems and the culture of uh, UMass Lowell Hockey and, you know, being a key part of this team. When we talk about teams and we, we talk about ingredients that make up good or great teams, do we talk about it from a standpoint, are there scores, are there goaltenders, are there hitters, or is it more about talking about ingredients such as character, such as work ethic, or, or maybe all of those? Well, I really think it's all of those, but it's awfully difficult to win if if you don't have talent, you know, you, you have to have character. And, and we like to say working hard is like breathing. You know, it's just something that our expectations and standards are much higher than that. You know, our ability to do the right thing is just like, that's like nothing because we do, you know, we're expected to do that. So that's what I really like. It's, you know, being driven internally that these things are just, this is the way we play. This is the structure we, we do it. This is how we go out our, about our business. You know, we're the men of UMass Lowell Hockey and this is our, this is our deal. You know, and, and and you look at our team and we have a lot of guys returning, but that doesn't mean anything unless you have the right guys returning, the right types of players and the right type of people, the right type of character. You know, I feel very strongly that we have all of that. If I look back 10 or 15 years ago in college hockey, it was a game of, apparently of offense. A lot of goals were scored. In recent years, scoring goals has been across the sport more and more difficult. Do we have the players, do we have the components necessary to be able to score enough goals this season? Time will tell. I think so. You know, we've, we have uh, Corey Felitti is probably the leading uh, goal scorer coming back in Hockey East in his career, in terms of career numbers. We have a lot of guys. Mike Shu, I think, has an ability to score goals. Uh, you know, I look at Scott Campbell at 14 last year. Maury Edwards had 11. I, I think we have good collective ability to score goals. I don't think we have any John Morris's on our team, you know, and guys that can just kind of put up huge numbers. But we don't need that. You know, we need to be good on the power play. We need to be good on the face-offs, create some face-off opportunities. If we create enough chances, we're going to score enough goals. Goals. Defensively, this team, that has really been the, kind of the trademark of this hockey club the last couple of years, has been a terrific group of defensemen, terrific team defense, and terrific goaltending. It sure has been. You know, we started off the year last year against Colgate and uh, gave up 16 shots on the road. Then we went to uh, East Lansing to play Michigan State last year in the first game, shut them out 3 nothing, gave up 16 shots on the road. So, you know, we've we've shown that we can really be a, a very strong team defensively, as you mentioned, uh, you know, our core of six defensemen are as good as anybody in the country in my mind. And then our team defense, our commitment to defense, our courage to block shots, all of those things are at a very high level. We play as if we don't have good goaltending and so we, we limit our opponents' grade A chances and we have two great goaltenders even if we do give up some, some scoring opportunities, they're typically equal to the task. Someone once told me about basketball. The team of the best player wins. Now basketball and hockey are vastly different. Do we have the go-to guys though that can make a difference 
in a tight, close, hard-fought hockey game? I think we do. Uh, you know, I don't think there's any question that we do. You know, I, I don't know how many teams, you know, like to win a national championship, do you need a go-to guy? I don't know. I'm not sure. Wilson maybe was the go-to guy for BU, but they had a lot of guys that could chip in, you know, and I think we're the same. But, you know, we definitely have some go-to guys that can that have shown they can play well in big games and score key goals. And uh, Scott Campbell could do that. Corey Felitti could do that. Maury Edwards could do that. So we have a lot of guys that think they can step up and be that guy. What are the intangibles that probably in most seasons are the bottom line that make a difference? What are the intangibles that often dictate the final product? Well, the intangibles are really, it comes down to your uh, habits, you know, and it, uh, your work habits, your your practice habits when you come here, your habits away from the rink. If you're really consistent in how you go about your business on the ice and away from the rink, then you're going to be consistent in how you perform. You know, I mean, it's you're going to have a bad night, you know, it doesn't ensure that it's, you know, foolproof, but you're, you're going to give yourself a higher level of probability that you're going to perform at the level you desire. If you have high standards, you have to have, you know, really excellent habits. And I think that's the biggest thing with us. We need to continually work on our habits, continually be consistent. And, and that's probably for us to have the type of year we want. You know, we can't be losing back-to-back games. We have to be able to bounce back. We, you know, we're, we're not going to play our A game all the time. We might have a bad period, but we have to be able to bounce back and, and readjust our focus. And I think with a older team, I think that experience, their wisdom will allow them to uh, look forward instead of backwards. We talk about this being an older team. What sort of role must the freshmen play on this hockey club for this team to be successful? I just think they need to just work hard and just kind of get the system, understand the style of play, just do the best they can. We don't need them to score 10 goals, 15 goals, be on the all-rookie team. We have enough of those guys. This is unique, whereas last year it was nice to have Val, uh, David Valerani, be able to make the all-rookie team and really be an impact type of player. We have so many veterans on this team and have great depth in all areas. And then when you look at replacing Mark Robothin, Michael Pataco, and Nicky Monroe, they were three very good players for us, but their dimension wasn't creating offense. Their dimension was just accountability, just, you know, being good, solid, complementary types of players. So then when you look at our recruiting, we replaced those players with similar types of players. Although I think maybe, you know, Riley Wetmore and maybe Joe Caveney and and down the road, uh, Robert Visca, I think they have a higher end offensive ability, but they're just good, solid players. And that's all we need of them this year. Going back four Septembers, we had a large freshman class. It's now a large senior class. Is this year about them in a lot of ways? The leadership, the character, if they have a good year, this program has a terrific year. It really is because because their journey has been a, a difficult journey. It's had some ups and downs, and, and they've been through some great experiences that will allow them to handle almost anything thrown their way this year. You know, their freshman year, we only won eight games, but we lost, it seemed like, 21 games by a goal. It was amazing how close we were. We had the threat of our program being taken away from us or moved, and, you know, we find that out when we're up at Vermont, but they went out and did a great job, and we got three out of four points up there. To really have walked in their shoes is an amazing accomplishment for them because those are some really truculent times and very difficult that you know to go through for a young student athlete that has their dreams and aspirations here at UMass Lowell to go on and compete for a national championship and, and all those things and all of a sudden maybe a program's taken away and now you only won eight games and then to come back uh, their sophomore year and they won 16 games and played really well to last year's uh, a very good year so I think you know they, they've shown consistency in their development and I'm sure they're not going to stop now. You've referred to championships and at least once to national championship. Is that the goal? Is that what this year is about, trying to go out and win a national championship? Well, it's about competing, you know. I mean, if you look at a storied program like BU, it, they hadn't got to the Frozen Four since maybe 97. Last year was the first time. So it just goes to show you how difficult it is. It's difficult, but, you know, you're also very close. You know, Boston College, the year before that, finishes fourth in Hockey East and wins the national championship. You know, the year before that, Michigan Michigan State had a had a difficult year and uh, you know got hot at the end of the year and they ended up winning a national championship. We're a lot closer than we've ever been, but you know you need some good fortune, you need some breaks, and, and BU got them, and BC got them, and Michigan State got them. So those are things that you know you need to go your way. You know we've got great support around our program now, from uh, Chancellor Meehan to to our athletic department, and really our our fans and alumni and former players have really really shown some great pride and and. Re- 
engagement with our team, that means an awful lot to our student athletes. I mean, you know, to see kids walking around campus now, and I see UMass Lowell stuff on a lot of kids' t-shirts, hats. It's great. That school spirit and pride is such a big thing for our guys. And, and when you see it on Friday and Saturday nights here at the Songus, it gives us that added push that a lot of other schools experience in our league, and it's going to make a huge difference in our season this year. Uh, let's make this a terrific year. Thank you very much for the time. Good luck. Thank you, Bob. My pleasure. Thank <laughs> you.